I, I miss Grant. <laughs> Wait a minute. Deep regret, I must inform you that your father, Charles Frederick Grand, passed away last night in his villa at Cap Antibes. As you are his only known relative and heir, your immediate presence is urgently requested. I don't suppose you're Flanagan. <laughs> no, I guess not. <laughs> Are we going to Cap Antibes? <laughs> I've never been here before. Is it far? Excuse me, don't you understand English? Hey, wait a minute. Wait! <laughs> Caring inscrutability, a tad too far, don't you think? Welcome, Miss Grand. I'm Flanagan. Oh, hello. I'm sorry about your father. Thank you. Showman, take Miss Grand's bags upstairs. <sighs> he does understand me, but he wouldn't talk to me. I've never heard him talk to anyone. Are you sure he can? Dunno, never asked him. <laughs> you mean you're not curious about why a man never says anything? Well, maybe nothing occurs to him. In any case, it's his business. Miss Grand, if you want to continue this pointless discussion, I suggest we do it inside. I think I liked it better with the driver. Mr. Flanagan, what exactly was your relationship to my father? Exactly. Couldn't tell you exactly. I guess I worked with him. With him or for him? Well, that's what I can't be exact about. Did he live alone? Yep. He never remarried, huh? What well, didn't he tell you? We didn't communicate regularly. When did you last hear from him? Seven years ago. He wrote me a letter. <laughs> I never answered it. It's been 18 years since I saw him last. Oh, the answer's no. The answer? He never remarried. Well, I didn't sleep on the plane, so uh, um, if you could just show me to my room, I'd love to get some rest. I'm afraid that's not possible. Your father wants to speak to you. Miss Grant, please. Mr. Flanagan, did you say my father? Wants to talk to you. But your telegram said he was... Dead? Oh, yes. He's dead, all right, Miss Grant. Please, sit down. This was his dying wish. Ready? Hello? Well, I'm afraid I've really done it this time. 
dead as a doornail, whatever that means. The one great regret of my life is that we didn't know each other better. We might have been good friends, Freddy. From what I've been able to find out about you, we seem to have shared a lot of the same qualities. I know I would have liked you. I already loved you. Uh, uh, Flanagan, uh, be a good fellow and get the hell out, will you? Yeah, right. He's a good man, a very good man. A little somber for an Irishman, but solid and dependable. Okay, Freddy, here's the loadout. I know you're wildly curious about what I did for a living and where all this money came from. What I did, in a word, was steal. Oh, I didn't uh, rifle uh, church collections or rob banks. I simply removed things from the homes of the very rich. So you could say that my fingers did the walking. So your mother, of course, didn't approve, especially after you were born. In fact, she put a very shapely foot down. So I left. I moved here to the South France to greener pastures where things went extremely well. Right up to the day I was arrested, I went straight to jail. Then, about a year after I came out, something really bizarre happened. I was approached by an insurance company. It seemed a client's jewelry had been stolen. They knew who had done it. It was a brother-in-law, isn't it always? But they couldn't prove it, and they wanted to avoid the publicity. So, would I be good enough to steal it back for them? Well, it turned out that I was good enough. And the word somehow must have gotten around, because in no time at all, I had myself a new career. And for the past 18 years, I've been stealing things back. Freddy, things that were stolen in the first place. And it was all uh, perfectly legal, as you can see from uh, looking around you. The wages of virtue are even greater than sin. I've made a fortune, an absolute fortune. And all of it can now be yours. Notice that I said can, Freddy. But uh, before I explain that remark, I want you to relax, look around the place, and have lunch. And then, I want you to do something for me. The one thing that no one can do for himself. I want you to bury me, Freddy. All right? And then we'll talk again. So you see, it isn't goodbye, but merely an au revoir. father's favorite. Ludomare. It's a local fish. You call it bass in the States. Those burning fennel branches give it an extraordinary flavor. And, of course, white asparagus with <laughs> hollandaise sauce. How did you meet him? Well, your father? Mm. And the slammer, of course. You were in jail, too? What did you do? Busted boxes. What does that mean? Open safes. <laughs> How did you... Get into the interesting line of work. I went to school, studied hard, and graduated with honors. Come on, I was being serious. So was I. I was trained by the best. The army. Demolition squad showed me how to open a safe, any safe in the world, in five minutes. I was good in it. It was only when I got out I realized I wasn't very good at anything else. Mm. Besides, I hated to think of all the money the government spent on training me going to waste. I managed to make a very fair living. Thank you. Until the law caught up with you. Law of averages, actually. Well, sooner or later, something's bound to go wrong. So there we were, in prison. Two crooks with nothing in common, except we're both doing French time. Well, he took charge of my life. Don't know why. He made me take those courses they give you now in jail, you know, to rehabilitate you. Pushed me into computers. Said, if you can work combinations, you can work those. He was right. Mm. He was right about everything. Mm. Once they sprung him, and you got this little number together, he pulled me in. Work was never dull. The hours were good, surroundings pleasant. 
Money's sinful. What more could a man ask, hmm? So the two of you went back to stealing? Stealing back. Come on, isn't that just, just a technicality? Well, the same one that separates murder from self-defense. You ever notice what he called this place? Villa Relove? Oh, I thought it was Russian. I, I, I figured it was the name of the last owner. What's Relove? Backwards. Voleur. How's your French? Volet. To steal. Oh, <laughs> to steal back. <laughs> Pretty clever. His idea? Who else? To steal back. Legally doing something illegal. Isn't that dangerous? Well, isn't everything? Crossing the street at rush hour is dangerous. So is eating saturated fat, standing up in the bathtub, breathing smog, being born is dangerous. Oh, sure, there were times when things did get a little dodgy, but just remember one thing. Your dad died in bed. Did he? I still don't know what happened. He got sick. One day he was 100%, the next he had three months to live. Except with him, it took a year. It was something he had to finish. Something that meant a great deal to him. What was that? He told you himself. Did he suffer a lot? No way of telling. He's not the kind of man that would let you know. Oh, no, thank you. I suppose he was in jail with you, too, huh? Well, sure, man. No, we found him in Marseille. He'd run afoul of one of those secret Chinese societies. They were just about to turn him into Mugu Gai Pan when your father rescued him. Oh, really? How? He played one hand of Fantan for him, 20,000 bucks against Shomin. That's incredible. Why'd he do it? Well, I don't know. He said he liked his smile. What smile? <sighs> oh. Showman would have died himself before he'd let anything happen to your old man. I guess we all took it pretty hard. He was quite a guy. He taught me everything I know. How to eat, how to order wine, dress, gamble, race fast cars. How to read maps and faces. Even how to die. He did that as he lived. Without complaining. Like a father to me. I'm glad he was to somebody. Come on, Miss Grant. Let's do what he asked. I never really could understand what had gone wrong. Until now. I do now. He was a thief. He paid for that. Not for what he did to my mother. He never paid for that. He said he wanted to see me, to get to know me, and that he'd made a lot of money and could help me. Well, I wrote him this very angry letter. But I never mailed it. I couldn't even remember what he looked like until I saw his face on that tape today. He was very handsome. He knew what you looked like. He had someone take pictures of you in New York without you knowing. He kept one next to his bed, along with one of your mother. He was always talking about you. He went to extraordinary lengths to make sure your future was secure. This is the place. Oh, it's really lovely here. That's what he thought. I've never done this before. It doesn't take any practice. <laughs> no, I guess not. Goodbye, Daddy. Goodbye, Daddy. Done the deed, my earthly remains have been consigned to the deep. Good. See, I wanted you to see that magnificent view before we spoke again. Now, you have seen it, as well as this house and the manner in which I lived and in which you can live, Freddy, if you want to. And so, my darling daughter, I'm going to make you a proposition, a decent one, I promise you. I hope you're sitting down. Uh, Flanagan, is she sitting down? Yep. Freddie, I want you to pick up where I left off. In other words, Freddie, I want you to take over the family business. What? Did 
you understand what I said, Freddy? Uh -huh. I want you to do what I've been doing, the way I've been doing it. I don't ask it lightly. Most of the people in this world aren't cut out for it. They don't have the eye and the hands and the guts for it. It takes someone with agility and timing and coordination. It takes charm and poise and a lot of nerve. He must have been losing his mind at the end. No, Freddy, I'm not crazy. I've never been more sane. Look at yourself. <laughs> you were a super athlete in school. You studied French, you majored in art, and you can think on your feet. Well, face it, Freddy, you've got everything you need to be a great thief. It takes one to know what. I don't believe this. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, Freddy. No, the hell you do. You're thinking that even if you wanted to do it, you still don't know how, right? Lucky guess. Right? Stop worrying, Freddy. That's where Flanagan comes in and show men. They'll help you just the way they helped me. And you've also got one enormous advantage that I didn't have. <laughs> I do? <laughs> what? Me. What is he talking about? OK, Flanagan, uh, put me on hold and explain it to her. OK, Flanagan, explain it to me, and it better be good. He really will be here to help you. There, in the computer. When he learned he was checking out, he codified everything he knew about the business, about himself, about you, places, names, dates, where, when, how, and why, filed on cross files as well. Then he had me design a program to fit all that data into. Hmm. The most complete how-to manual on robbery, from pickpocketing to second story work ever created. He called it Dialogue Activated Data Display. Dad. And to key the routine, you have to enter a query. And if the information's available, it's immediately displayed. Displayed how? Well, he answers you. He what? <laughs> well, you ask him a question, and he answers you. Well, that's if he knows the answer. He doesn't, he tells you that too. It's all there. Hundreds and hundreds of hours on videotape, all keyed through the computer. Are you saying we actually talk to each other? Try it. Oh, no, no, no. You, you try it first. I can't. The program is security coded to respond to your voice only. <sighs> Push the entity in, too. Father? Before you talk. Oh. Father? Punch display when you're through. Yes, Freddy? <laughs> Father? Yes, Freddy? What should I say? Insufficient information. What? <laughs> he thought you were talking to him. Oh, um, right. Uh, Father, what on earth gave you the idea that I'd want to do what you do, what you did? From everything I've been able to learn about you, Freddy, your life in New York doesn't suit you at all. You're bored and you're restless. You weren't cut out to punch a time clock any more than I was. The idea of waking up in the morning and knowing everything you're going to do before you go to bed that night is all right for some people, most people, but not for me, Freddy, and not for you. If I'm wrong, Freddy, if I misjudged you, just get up and walk away. I won't say another word. You don't know me. How could you? I, a couple of detectives and some snapshots and a look at my resume don't give you a true picture of anyone, and least of all me. So I'm definitely walking away, right now. Suit yourself. You don't want the house and all the money. What does he mean? Key. What do you mean? If you refuse, my entire estate, the house, the furnishings, the bank accounts, and the business go to Flanagan. <laughs> if you refuse, my entire estate. The Wait, house, um, how do the I stop this thing? The Just bank accounts account. and um, the business. Did you know about that? Naturally. Oh, so naturally you hope that uh, I just walk away and you get everything, right? Naturally. <laughs> but you won't. No, you get it anyway. I mean, I know that, so did he. This is infuriating. <laughs> How could the, the two of you be so sure of yourselves? He's making you a dare. 
your own father. And if you're anything at all like him, you'll have to take him up on it. Oh, that's what you think. You know, I could just as easily walk right out of here and get back on a plane and go back to New York in my fascinating job. Except for one thing. What's that? I quit my fascinating job. Why? It was too damn boring. He was right. I don't know. Well, you seem pretty calm about all of this, considering all you stand to lose. It's because I'm not worried. Oh, sure, you'll take your best shot, but I don't think it's going to be good enough. Chances of you cutting this range between slim and none so I can wait. Oh, and you're someone I'm supposed to rely on to help me when I get into trouble, huh? Well, thanks a lot, Dad. Who's going to protect me from him? Hey, you are his kid. I promised him and I promised you, you'll get all the help you want and need because he wanted it that way. And if you do manage to pull this off, you'll keep me around. Because being good enough means being smart enough to want the best. So why don't we sit back there and hear the deal? Hmm? You think you're pretty smart, don't you? Insufficient information. Okay, what's the deal? Here's the deal, Freddy. Take one case, only one. Try it to the best of your ability. Flanagan and Showman will help, and so will I. And if you botch it, or even if you pull it off and don't want any more to do with it, you're off the hook. Half of the property goes to you and half to Flanagan. And believe me, half is still a great deal, Freddy. So what do you say? What case would it be? How should I know? I'm dead. Mm. Call Lloyd Morrison. He's the local representative of the Westminster Group, the British insurance company. Lloyd's office is in Nice. He's always got something. Tell him you want an easy one on a trial basis. Yeah, Flanagan said it could be dangerous. What if I get killed? What, what do we do then? I'll buy you lunch. <sighs> Aren't you coming with me? Hey, you know, I'd really love to, but it's murder parking around here. You just can't wait for me to fall on my face, can you? How do you do, Miss Grant? Hello. I'm Lloyd Morrison. I'm so very sorry about your father. I shall miss him very much indeed. Thank you. <laughs> oh, please be seated, Miss Grant. Here, no. let me move oh. some of these. Well, that's one way of getting rid of them. <laughs> yes, well, as you can see, we're fairly busy around here. <laughs> Trying to keep things straight, I imagine. What? Oh, well, yes. I suppose to the casual observer, it must look rather disorganized. But I assure you, I know precisely where everything is. Pride myself on that. <laughs> yes, Charles was a wonderful man. Wonderful, full of... Full of... Yes, I know what you mean. Oh, my goodness, no. I didn't mean that. <laughs> Je de vivre. That's what it was, joy of life. Yes, and he's, uh, he's enjoying his death a bit, too. <laughs> Mr. Morrison, I, I came to tell you that uh, I've decided to join the firm. I'm taking over his business on a trial basis. I see. Uh, Miss Grand, uh... What is wrong with your face? You have such a peculiar expression on it. it oh, well, it's just that I... Don't exactly regard it as woman's work, if you know what I mean. If I were you, 
I wouldn't try that line on your prime minister. Huh? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> well, if it was Charles's wish, tell me, what was your last job? I swiped a lipstick from a drugstore when I was 12. You call that experience? I didn't get caught. <laughs> it must be in the genes, right? <laughs> Look, Mr. Morrison, I realize that I'm starting practically from scratch. But sometimes a, a person doesn't know what he can do until he tries. I'm willing to try. Oh, now, wait a minute. I think I've got just the thing. Uh, 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 I know exactly where it is. <laughs> Pride yourself on that. <laughs> um, ah, there it is. The very thing, the Star of Cumberland. The Star of Cumberland. Oh my gosh, I know what it is. It's, it's a giant diamond, right? Or, no, 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 it's a, it's, it's a priceless emerald. Stolen from a crown, from the crown from the Tower of London, am I right? Well, it has something to do with a crown, yes. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> the triple crown. It's a horse. Morrison said it won two legs of the Triple Crown three years ago. Star of Cumberland. Think yeah. I remember it. Horse of the Year, right? You got me. Oh, it seems that it, that it was flown over to Paris last month for the Arc de Triomphe at Longchamp. This was before it was going to be sold to a syndicate for $21 million, you know, and then turned out to stud. Some guys get all the luck. <laughs> me meets you, Flanagan. <laughs> well, maybe not. Anyway, it was loaded onto a van at Orly Airport, but neither the van nor the horse has been seen since. And there hasn't even been a ransom demand, which, according to uh, Morrison, is very odd, very odd indeed. Oh, there were the usual prank calls and false leads, but, uh, but only one of them seemed even remotely genuine. There was this filling station attendant at Aix-en-Provence, which is about 100 miles north of here. I know where it is. He heard a neighing sound coming from a bakery van. But by the time it was reported to the gendarme, I mean, the, the trail had gone completely cold. And the police have completely thrown up their hands. <laughs> Who owns the horse? I knew you'd ask. Um, Mr. Henry Ledbetter of Cumberland, Kentucky. He's owned the horse since he was a colt. What does he look like? Ledbetter? The horse. I have a picture right here. Hey! Stay here for a minute. Who's the two-legged one? <laughs> Led better, of course. <sighs> Naturally, he's very upset. And he's here in Nice, too, so, uh, so I figure he's my best lead. Smart idea. Thank you. Considering it's your only lead. Madame Dupont sur Java, Le nouveau concurrent est notre champion local, M. Morrison said we could find him here. Oh, the horse? No, Ledbetter. <laughs> <laughs> this is all some kind of joke to you, isn't it? But you're going to be laughing out of another side of your face. Look, when... there he is. We found him. The horse? No, Ledbetter. See you later, Flanagan. Well, you don't need me? No, thanks. <laughs> Mr. Ledbetter? <laughs> Hello, I'm Frederica Grand. I've been hired by your insurance company to find the Star of Cumberland. Oh, you won't find him here. I already looked. <laughs> what made you think he'd even be here? They don't use resources at a show like this. I checked all the tracks. Now I'm looking anywhere there's horses. Could you tell me a little about him? Miss Grand, do you know anything about horses? I've ridden them. I know the front end from the back end. <laughs> Well, that's a damn sight farther than most people I spoke to since I come here. 
tell me about him? Please, Mr. Ledbetter? Well, there ain't much to tell. All my life I spent looking at horse flesh. I rode them, exercised them, trained them, and owned them. And a star is just the plain best thing on four hooves it ever was. So uh, when I run into him, how do I know him for sure? You can't miss him. He's a roan. Stands 16 hands high, weighs 985 pounds. His tail is long and silky, so's his mane. <laughs> I know him anywhere. <laughs> There's a star, of course, smack dab in the middle of the eyes. Uh, oh, and he's crazy about celery. Y you did say celery. Right. Got a hold of some once, and after that, he couldn't get enough of the stuff. <laughs> celery, hmm. Um, does he answer to his name? He does when I call him. He knows my voice all right. Thanks, Mr. Ledbetter. You're going to be hearing from me. Miss Grand, everything I got, everything I am, is that horse. It's not the money. Of course, I could use it, but uh, it's more than that. If anything ever happened to him, I, I just don't know what I'd do. I understand. Don't worry. I'm going to get that horse back for you. Bye. You look out, you fool. No, I didn't break anything, but thanks for asking. Next time, watch where you're going. Next time? What do you mean, next time? Nice guy. Tires could do the same thing to you. Forget the horse. Threats shouldn't be taken all that seriously. Oh, really? When do they grab your attention? When my body's washed ashore? Insufficient deflation. OK. Why shouldn't I take the threat seriously? People who make threats aren't dangerous. It's the people who carry them out. <laughs> Great. I ask for advice, I get a fortune cookie. <laughs> Less platitudes, please, and more help. That's what you promise. I mean, somebody is threatening my life. Threats are a sure sign of progress. OK, that's better. What kind of progress? Someone's warning you off. That means you're moving in the right direction. But I don't know what direction I'm moving in. I, I, I've only talked to two people so far. Identify, please. Um, uh, Lloyd Morrison. Above suspicion. And Henry Ledbetter. Insufficient deflation. Oh, he's the, he's the owner of the stolen racehorse. Insufficient deflation. Stop sounding like a computer. Why not? You are a computer. You only look like a father. I need more help. I can't help it if you don't ask the right questions. It's no good asking me things I didn't know about before I died. Don't right, fight right, me, Freddy. Right. Use me. Use what I do now. All right. Start over. OK, starting over. Where would I go about finding a racehorse? Interesting question. I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> Rashid Saud. Gazuntheit. Rashid Saud. One more time, please. <laughs> Rashid Saud, a very rich Arab, likes fast cars, fast women, and fast horses. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> Ask Rashid Saud. Can I trust this guy? <laughs> Negative. If he knew what you were after, he tried to get to it first. Not for the money, he's got enough of that. Just for the pleasure of beating you up. Oh. So how would I go about finding this Rashid Saud? It's a casino in Cannes. Saud is at the open limit shemi table every night about 10. 
What on earth is Shemmy? Chemin de Fer is a game like blackjack, only more lethal. Oh, it sounds like fun. Could you teach it to me? Negative. You are not to play Chemin de Fer, and you are especially not to play Chemin de Fer with Rashid Saoud. Is that clear? Clear. Boring, but clear. But on the other hand, you'll never know, will you? Daddy. Thank you. Quatre-vingt-mille au banco, messieurs. On peut faire la table. Banco. Banco est demandé. Rien de jeu. Gina, my dear, you deal for luck. Neuf en banque, huit. Huit, on a les souilles droits, tout le temps. Oh, j'ai quand même... Oh, merde. Le tout, s'il vous plaît, 160 000. Le tout, 160 000. 160 000, messieurs. 160 000 au banco. 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 Do we know each other, mademoiselle? Uh, not even remotely. <laughs> Wasn't Gina going to do something with those cards? <laughs> Proceed, my dear. Hit me. Cut. Whatever. Six on bank. I've got six. What have you got? Twenty-one. I win. Uh. Are you crazy? If you had the seven, you ruined it. You would have won. Why did you draw? I don't know. It seemed like a good idea at the time. You just lost a great deal of money. How much? Roughly twenty-six thousand dollars. <laughs> Oh, you're not serious, are you? <laughs> I'm afraid I am. Well, you better not be, because I don't have it. What did you say? I said I don't... Don't say it. I'm at bus. No, no, bus. Come with me. Shouldn't we take Gina with us? Do you realize you could have been arrested for what you've done? Are you arresting me? You were that clumsy girl at the horse show. Oh. Is that why you did this tonight, to get even with me? Oh, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I didn't even know you were going to be here. I just came here to win some money. <laughs> There's a long-standing, though inconvenient rule in this establishment about winning money. You must bet money, actual money. As a matter of fact, it's against the law if you don't. But that doesn't make sense. I mean, if I actually had money, I wouldn't need to win it. <laughs> You're missing the whole point about gambling. It's to risk losing money that you need in order to win money that you don't need. Is that true? I'm afraid it is. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Tell me, who are you? I mean, what is your name? Frederica Grand. American, I take it. Yes. And you? 
Rashid Saoud. Uh, rich, I take it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Why did you mm. need this money? You wouldn't understand. Take a chance. It won't be your first this evening. There's this horse. Horse? I knew you wouldn't understand. Oh, yes, I will. Tell me. I saw him today at that horse show. Oh, I have never wanted anything in the world like I want this horse. I mean, he's so beautiful. He has, he has these sensitive eyes and, and, and the way his little ears kind of picked up when I talked to him. <laughs> it, it was love at first sight. Lucky horse. I used to have a couple horses of my own, you know. And then I had to give them all up when Daddy lost his money. He was in the carbon paper business. In fact, my great-grandfather invented it. But then, when those horrible copy machines came into vogue, I mean, we just lost everything. Daddy died of a broken heart. I'm so sorry. Yeah, well... Tell me, what are we going to do about that little matter of the $26,000 that you owe me? Um, one more hand, double or nothing? I have a better idea. Why don't you come to my villa for lunch tomorrow? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I, I really couldn't. What if I told you that I was very interested in horses myself and that I have one or two champions I'd like you to see? Oh, I'm, I'm afraid it's completely out of the question. What if for dessert I canceled your gambling debt? What time's lunch? <laughs> Whenever you get there. Just tell my name to any taxi driver. They all know my house. Okay. Until tomorrow, Frederica. <laughs> tomorrow? Taxi, mademoiselle. Ah, uh, uh, oui. Un taxi, s'il vous plaît? Suivez-moi. Uh, um, where is it? It's... Uh... Là-bas, c'est pas loin. Uh, why don't I wait for you over there, okay? Je, je vous attends là-bas. Mademoiselle? Okay. What do you guys want? I don't have any money. I lost it. I lost it all at the casino. Please don't think I'm ungrateful, showman, but I really don't appreciate someone following me like that, especially when I don't know about it. And first thing in the morning, I want you to teach me how to do that. Good evening, Miss Grant. My, that was exciting. Thanks for your help. Showman and I have this agreement. He doesn't crack safes, I don't crack heads. So far, it's worked out pretty well. Oh, and don't blame him for following me. That was my idea. Oh, naturally. Because you think I'm such an incompetent. Well, you know, you didn't really have to bother. I mean, I could have managed. Well, like with your three playmates back there. I would have thought of something. Right. You could have bled all over them. And while they were being sick to their stomachs, you could have escaped. Miss Grand, everyone needs help at one time or another. 
Do you mind if I ask you a personal question? I certainly do. Why aren't you married? <laughs> you want to know why I'm not married? All right, I'll tell you why I'm not married. The reason I'm not married is because it's none of your damn business. Okay. I was married. What happened? He was boring. You use that word a lot, don't you? I mean, your job was boring, your husband was boring. Yeah, and now you're being boring, so butt out. Maybe you didn't give him a chance. Maybe you never told him that you needed him. Miss Grant, like I said, everyone needs help sometimes. All right, fine again. Do you really want to help me? All right, you could really help me right now by just telling me what I should do next. I haven't the foggiest idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks for your help, Flynn. Hey. <laughs> Any time. I am uh, Jean-Louis Duménil, Deputy Inspector of the Police Judiciaire for the Department of the Alpes Maritimes. <laughs> How do you do? Mademoiselle Grande, I have called you in to discuss an episode that happened last night in front of the casino in Cannes. Uh, yes, it seems you were being observed being uh, accosted by uh, three individuals. Well, whoever did the observing certainly didn't do any helping. It was the concierge of the building across the street. She telephoned the police. I was uh, desolated for the passing of your father. Desolated. Thank you. We were the copains. Chums. <laughs> we also had many affairs in common. Oh, yes? <laughs> oh, yes. In fact, uh, we were together when he pulled his last... Uh, how do, how do you say that? Caper? Oh, caper. Precisely. Oh, he was a genius, mademoiselle. A veritable genie. Yes, we had many affairs in common. <laughs> Is it uh, possible, mademoiselle, that you have become involved with his affairs? Oh, well, if you're talking about his business, yes, it is possible. But this is absolutely delightful. It means that we will be having affairs together. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> to our affairs. Uh, <laughs> Oops. <laughs> what is amusing? Well, actually, in America, affairs mean something else. In France, also. Oh, yes, but surely you don't mean... But why not? When two people are as attractive as we work together, some things are inevitable. <laughs> Look, Inspector. Oh, Jean-Louis, please. And may I call you a friend? No, I'll call you. But you have not yet finished your wine. Oh, that's OK. You can, uh, you can pour it back in the bottle. I just don't think we're getting off on the right foot, that's all. I mean, look at what we've got here. An English insurance agent uh, who believes a woman's place is in the kitchen. A French cop with all the charm of a floor lamp who, who looks at me like I'm totally naked. And that's nothing compared to that assistant of yours, Mr. Flanagan. I mean, he is the real problem. How do you expect me to work with someone who doesn't even have a first name? I mean, the man sits around waiting for me to shoot myself in the foot. No one is taking me seriously. How am I supposed to cut this thing with that kind of assistance? Insufficient deformation. And you're a big help, too. So you didn't have to prove anything because you're a man. You were a man. but. How am I supposed to fill your shoes when everyone keeps telling me I'm a seven and a half B? Insufficient deformation. <sighs> Did you happen to put a pep talk in there? <laughs> you know, I could use a little encouragement. In case of a lack of confidence, I have prepared a speech. You have five <laughs> seconds to turn me off. Oh. Okay, 
Since I'm still on, here it is. Freddy, you're your father's brains, guts, charm, and larceny. And you're also your mother's daughter, which means you have got brains, guts, charm, and integrity. You're a dynamite combination, Freddy. So no more insecurity, please. That really is boring. End of speech. Thanks, I needed that. Insufficient information. Why do you keep saying that? Whatever the question was, I didn't predict it. Why not? When a person's dead, Freddy, he can't think of everything. <laughs> That's true. <gasps> OK, <clears throat> I made contact with Rashid Saud. He's very dangerous. Be careful. Saud can be dangerous. <gasps> you can say that again. He bought me champagne. He, uh, he kissed my hand. He invited me to lunch at his place. Oh, but to talk about horses, he said. In any case, I accepted. Be careful. Saud can be dangerous. For a computer, you're sounding an awful lot like a father. But don't worry. I had my first karate lesson with Shomin today. If it's full contact the man wants, that's what he's going to get. Ciao. Thank you. Mm. Oh, this cheese is heavenly. <laughs> What's it called? Reblochon. Reblochon. Some people find the flavor a little strong. Oh, not me. No, I like strong things. No, I mean, I mean, this is perfect. The entire meal was entirely perfect. I've never tasted sea urchins before. <laughs> I've never even seen one. <laughs> show you many things you've never seen, Frederica. I'm sure you can, Mr. Saud. You know, in fact, I haven't seen this many undressed women since I canceled my subscription to National Geographic. <laughs> <laughs> are they all friends of yours? Oh, I haven't the foggiest idea who they are. They just came with the house. They're friends of the previous owner, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, they sure are attractive. I like to have very attractive things where I can see them. <laughs> Would you like a swim? Oh, no, I'm, I'm afraid I didn't bring a suit. Oh, I happen to have them in all sizes. <laughs> I'll bet you do. I even have some very proper ones, which I keep for Americans and Russians. Some other time, Mr. Saud. Rashid, please. Some other time. Rashid. Besides, my mother told me I must always wait a full hour after eating. <laughs> and I haven't finished eating. What's for dessert? Excuse me, Mr. Saud, there is a phone call for you online. Can't it wait? I'm afraid not. Hi, Gina. Miss Grant. <laughs> How'd you do last night? At the casino, I mean. I can't complain. Excuse me, please. Yes, Your Highness. Oh, I understand perfectly, Your Highness. I, I will make sure that the matter is looked into uh, straight away. Goodbye, Your Highness. Which Your Highness was that? One of your run-of-the-mill Your Highnesses, or, or a real biggie? <laughs> Biggie, I'm afraid. The king's brother. He hasn't received his three dozen pairs of handmade lob shoes from London. <laughs> <laughs> now then, where were we? Mm -hmm. Raspberries with creme fraiche. Kiwi sorbet. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Saud. Rashid, you promised that I could see your horses. After dessert. What about instead of dessert? 
You seem to be very interested in horses, Federica. Well, I told you that, that I was, remember? Oh. Right then, I'll show them to you. Is anything the matter? <laughs> no, 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 I, I just said something in my eye. Let me have a look. <sighs> no, that's, it's fine now. Because you are such a fancier of horses yourself, you will understand my own particular passion to possess the finest stable in the whole world. Well? <laughs> what do you think of him? Oh, he's beautiful. What about this one? This and this and this one. <laughs> As you might notice, I'm partial to a certain look. Yes, I can see that. When I've finished breeding them, I will have achieved an equine master race. The fastest, strongest, most beautiful horses ever seen. Have you ever experienced being on one of these animals, Frederica? The sensation of power and strength between your knees. The thrill of feeling a 45 mile an hour wind in your face on a day without even a breeze. Would you like to know that ecstasy, Frederica? You can, you know. All you have to do is Come here and live with me. <laughs> Isn't it already getting a little crowded around that pool? You won't see any of them anymore. I'll give them back. Give them back? I could make yeah. you extremely happy, Frederica. You will make me happy, too. You'll give me back my youth. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that adorable? He's jealous. Oh. <laughs> you weren't even listening to me. <laughs> oh, oh, I am. I, and that's the trouble. I really am. Oh, my God. What next? <laughs> Gina, this is not a convenient time. I'm busy. When? Now? All right, go ahead, read it to me. But quickly, please. All right, Gina. All right, I hear you. Yes. Yes, I'm still with you, Gina. Oh, you should have seen the way he went after that celery. Lots of horses like celery. The horse didn't just like celery. He loved celery. He practically took three fingers off with it. No, it's the Star of Cumberland, all right. And Sao didn't suspect anything? Why would he? 
And he really had me fooled, too, until I saw that Scarface guy working in the garden. Oh, and then when I saw every single horse he owns looked exactly like the Star of Cumberland. Maybe he just likes horses who look like that. Or he's trying to hide one horse that looks exactly like that. I just don't go for it. Why would he steal a horse when he could buy it? Why are you being so negative? You still want me to fail, don't you? It's not what I want. It's what I expect. Electric. They open it from the house. Oh, why wake them this time of night? Hmm? No. Stand clear. Not bad, eh? Kitty stuff. Flashlight. Please, do this blindfolded wearing mittens. Well, who couldn't? <laughs> Kindergarten stuff. Which door? Here, this one. Star. Ooh, we've come to take you out of here. Okay, go open up the van and uh, put down the ramp. I'll be right behind you. Since when are you giving the orders? Do you mind? We can argue about this later. Flanagan, wait a minute. What is it now? Ledbetter said that the horse was 16 hands, right? And uh, either he's grown or I've shrunk. What do you mean? I'm taller than 16 hands, and look. What do you know? It's a horse of a different color. Oh, you're a phony. I bet they all are, except for one. Well, I hope you brought plenty of celery. Nope, but I brought something even better. I had this made just in case. Star? Can you hear me, Star? It's Henry. I haven't forgotten you, Star. <laughs> oh, we got him. <laughs> Sixteen hands right on the button. <laughs> okay, Flanagan, go get the van and I'll just find a halter for him. I'll be glad when this is over. Oh, stop. We found you. I'm so happy. Oh, you're clever, Rashid, but not clever enough. Flanagan, where are you? Hiya! Oh! I'm gonna take more lessons! You're clever, Frederica, but not clever enough. spend too uncomfortably. What time is it? A little after five. It's always such a lovely thing, the dawning of a new day. I'm sorry you have to miss it. Why did you steal that horse? Well, why do you suppose? I wanted it. Isn't that why people usually steal things? Not always. Why didn't you just buy the horse? I mean, God knows you can afford it. <laughs> oh, God is one of the few who knows I can't. 
So what does that mean? You see, as a minor prince of my country, I'm only a nephew of the king's second wife's brother. I've always been largely dependent on his majesty's generosity. As long as the price of oil was high, that generosity was ample. Alas, the price is no longer high. So certain economies had to be made. Unfortunately, I was one of those economies. Oh, I attempted to maintain myself through my abilities at the casino. But luck, as the Arabs say, is a friend of plenty and a stranger to need. I had to find new remedies. And then the answer came to me. I must do something imaginative and extravagant to please the king and earn his gratitude. And the only thing his nibs never had was a Kentucky Derby winner, right? <laughs> I have always admired the way you Americans cut straight to the punchline. I intend in the next several minutes to place the animal on board the ship, which is even now standing offshore, and which will carry my gift horse through the Suez Canal directly to the royal stables. <sighs> and you intend just to keep me here as a prisoner uh, until it arrives? Oh, Frederica, how can you be so bright for certain things and so dense about others? What do you mean? just got the point, didn't you? I saw that in your wonderful eyes. Of course, I can't release you, Frederica. His Majesty wouldn't appreciate an international incident. You know that, I'm sure. Yes, but on the other hand, I... No other hand! No. No more other hand, I'm afraid. You should have realized that before you stuck your nose into my business. Did you really imagine that I would swallow your ridiculous story? Oh, just happened to be crazy about horses. Shame on you, Frederica. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Shoot me? <laughs> Good Lord, no. I despise loud noises. Now, I've arranged something less messy. You see, this wine cellar was originally designed as a vault. It has a steel door which is fully 10 inches thick. It is a well-known scientific fact that air cannot pass through 10 inches of steel. I don't think I'm gonna like this very much. <laughs> no, probably not. But just to show you I'm not a barbarian, I'd like you to have this. It's a bottle of Armagnac. Can you see the date? 1810. Napoleon drank it when he was depressed. It's the last bottle in existence. I bought it at an auction for $25,000. You may have as much as you like. But I advise you to drink it all. See, the air will last for only a few hours. By that time, you may not care in the slightest. Bye, Frederica. Can't get away with this. <laughs> Such a tired cliche, Frederica. Save your breath, you're going to need all you have. Talk to me. Come on, you are a genius. How would you get out of this, huh? Daddy. Oh, God. You should have known I wasn't smart enough. I couldn't even finish my first robbery. I guess we're going to be having lunch sooner than either of us thought. Oh, poor Star. He's never going to see Mr. Ledbetter again. Poor Mr. Ledbetter's never gonna see Star again. 
Poor me, I'm never gonna see anybody again. Can I have a slug of that? Or do you only drink alone? Oh, oh, God, I've never been so happy to see anybody in my whole life. Aren't you uh, going to ask me how I opened the door? No, I don't care how. Oh, go on, ask me how I opened it. <laughs> oh, how did you open it? <laughs> well, it's a combination of things. <laughs> old safe cracker joke. Yeah, bad old safe cracker joke. Well, where's the Sheik of Arab? He's upstairs asleep? No, 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 he's getting away with the horse. Come on, Flanagan. Taking the star to a ship in the harbor. Come on, we've got to get him out. Okay, it's right over here. Let's see if they haven't switched them again. <sighs> Why would they? They think I'm drunk or dead. Hello, Star. <laughs> okay, now sneak out the back and bring the van around the front. Do you remember what happened the last time we tried that? <sighs> Would you just trust me once? I know what I'm doing. At least I think I do. Your father will never forgive me. Uh, so we won't tell him. Just get the hell out of here. Come on, baby. Whoa. I'll bring out the horse.
Where, where is she? She's late. Relax, she'll be here. It was impossible to expect her to do it. She'll be here. <laughs> Good morning, gentlemen. Can you not knock like everyone else? Oh, I'm sorry if we frightened you. We thought you were going to be too late. What? And miss all the fun? Where is she, sir? Don't worry. She'll be along presently. It all went perfectly. We lost her exactly as we planned. You all know my friend Dr. Ali Zafrullah who's visiting me from Pakistan. As you can see, I'm really not such a frightful fellow. <laughs> when he heard about our little scheme, he was delighted to join the adventure. Where's Ledbetter? He said he might be a little late. He had important business. At the casino, no doubt. The poor soul has a sickness, I'm afraid. Yes. And now he owes me 10,000 francs. He bet that Freddy would never pull it off. But by God, she has. I must say, the girl has come through with flying colors. Oh, wait. She has been absolutely marvelous. It is true, then, that her late father designed the whole exercise as a test? Exactly. Yes. Excuse me. Hello? Your stable man. Hello? When? Are you certain? All right, I'll take care of it. I'm afraid we have a problem, gentlemen. It seems my prize stallion is missing. Freddy took the wrong horse. You sure? <laughs> really? My stable man knows the difference between a $10,000 polo pony and a $5 million stallion. Somebody switched? Freddy? Of course not. Then, where is she? She certainly should have been here by now. Did Ledbetter say what this important business was? <sighs> easy, boy. Take it easy. Oh, this just isn't my day. Oh! Sorry, Miss Grand. I didn't quite get what you were saying. Mr. Ledbetter. Oh, thank God it's you. I... Look, I got him back for you. Hello, Miss Grand. Gina. What are you doing here? I... I thought you were Saud's secretary. Yes, until this morning. What is going on? Oh, a great deal, I'm afraid. I hardly know where to begin. <laughs> you don't even sound the same. Oh, well, I wouldn't, would I? It was all part of the test, of course. <laughs> test? What, what test? Your father wanted to find out if you were cut out for this kind of work, and he enlisted all of us, his friends, to help find out. So then, none of what happened was real? I'm afraid not. Oh, Morrison and Inspector Dumanil are what they say they are, but the case itself was a sham, and I'm neither an owner nor a trainer of horses. I'm a banker, actually, or at least I was. It seems there was some money missing. Gambling is an expensive habit. So is Gina. Unfortunately, I can't break myself of either of them. Oh, you must have all had a real laugh at my expense, huh? So I was never in any danger, was I? No. Not until now. What do you mean? This isn't part of the test, Miss Grand. This is extremely real, and no one's laughing anymore. I'm actually kidnapping you and that horse, especially the horse. The Star of Cumberland? Huh. There is no Star of Cumberland, Miss Grand. That is another of your father's inventions. That is not the actual horse you thought you stole. That is a very valuable horse. What are you talking about? It's the same horse, isn't it? Oh, no. Who's this, then? Lord Stanley. His grandfather won the English Derby. He's Saud's most precious possession. When did you make the switch? Oh, I didn't. Gina did while you were locked in the wine cellar. I knew you wouldn't check. There was no reason to. So what are you going to do with the horse? You're a smart girl. You tell me. If you're going to use my father's plan, 
You're gonna sell it to Mr. Saud's uncle, the King of Arabia. If Mr. Saud has an uncle somewhere, it'd be in Egypt, not Arabia. Mr. Saud is a producer of very bad, but very successful motion pictures. So who gets the horse? The brother of the defense minister of Libya. I met him at the roulette tables in Nice. It seems he wants to develop a racing stable. There's a ship in the harbor that's sailing this afternoon for Tripoli. We'll all be on it. I'm going with you on the ship? Only halfway on the ship. A fine mess you've gotten us into this time, Lord Stanley. There are three possibilities. One, Freddie's been delayed, in which case we'd have heard from her by now. Two, she's had an accident, in which case Jean-Louis would have heard. Exactly. Which leaves three. Ledbetter is behind this, which means he's got Freddie and the horse. So what do we do? Well, my guess is that he sold the horse for somebody rich, but he can't sell it in France. It's too well known. Which means he's got to send it out of the country by ship. Fantastic, exactly according to Charles's plans. Now, check the newspapers. There's two departures today. One is the Kazumi Maru, bound for Yokohama through the Suez Canal. The other is a Panamanian freighter called the Mariposa, which is bound for Tunis by way of Tripoli. I vote for the Japanese. They're buying everything these days. No, 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 no. It's definitely the Panamanian. OK, we'll split up. Rashid, you and Zafrullah check out the Kazumi Maru. We'll take the Panamanians. I just hope we get there in time. Just to make it interesting, I'd like to wager 10,000 it's the Japanese. Done. I think we're slowing down. Have you got any bright ideas? <clears throat> you better come up with something. <clears throat> We've only got about a minute before they get to us. Oh, Daddy, what would you do? There you are, gentlemen. Glad to see you made it. Wait a minute. What if we... No, that's no good. We already tried that. So what? It worked before, didn't it? And Ledbetter didn't even see it. It's gonna work again. I know it will. Okay, Stanley, you remember how to do it, right? Get out the horse. Uh, give us a hand there. One more time. Now, do you remember how it's done? You can do better than this. Faster. Faster. Ready? We're here. Great. I thought maybe Stanley and I would have to walk back. Thank you. Ready. How about a drink? 
Flanagan. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have to admit, I have never been so excited. <laughs> I mean, that whole experience back in the boatyard, when, when I saw those bad guys coming after me and I started smashing at those timbers under the boat, oh, I felt like a rush that I've never felt before. You mean you weren't bored? Mm. I knew that whatever it was I'd been doing with my life before, it wasn't enough. I guess I'm a lot more like my father than I'd ever imagined. <laughs> and I was good, too, wasn't I? Come on, even you have to admit I can cut it, right? No. Nope. No? Uh-uh. But we can, Freddy. Together. No, I'm gonna be honest with you. I mean, I don't think I could cut it on. Well, well, maybe I could, but... The uh, <laughs> thing is, I don't want to. It was terrific working with your father, and I think we could have the same sort of relationship. A business relationship, you mean? Of course, what else? Oh. Well, yeah, you're right, of course. I mean, <laughs> it should be strictly business, you know? I mean, because you get involved with someone you work with, and then... Next thing you know, you become uninvolved, and there goes the business. Right. You really were terrific, you know. <laughs> I know. I mean, I, I can't think of many people who could have pulled it off better. Well, maybe one. But what you did showed courage, resourcefulness, spontaneity, all those qualities he admired. He'd have been proud of you, Freddy. Yeah, but he didn't trust me. Oh, that's nonsense. <laughs> no, it isn't. I could have done it for real. I did do it. I mean, why'd there have to be that stupid test? I, I felt so damn foolish. Talk to him. I'm too mad. Count to ten, you can afford to be generous. Why should I be generous? Because you're still alive. And because the things went down that he couldn't know about, things that have made you stronger. Talk to him. I'll see you later. Daddy? Yes, Freddy? I'm reporting in about the horse. Uh, tell me about the horse. Did you succeed in stealing it back? <laughs> More than you'll ever know. Yes or no? Yes. <laughs> you did it, Freddy. I knew you would. <laughs> I'm very proud of you. A chip of the old block. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, but as far as you're concerned, it was only a test. You know by now it was a test. Why, Daddy? Why didn't you trust me? I suppose you think I don't trust you, Freddy, but <laughs> suppose you had run into trouble, real trouble. You're not ready to handle that yet. Think about it, Freddy. What if your life really had been in danger? What would you have done then? Wouldn't you like to know? But I did it, Daddy. I really did it. I got back that horse. You did it, Freddy. I knew you would. <laughs> oh, I'm proud sorry. of you. The chip of you your old did block. this part. Um, forgive me for doing this. I know it's unfair, but I have to know. Daddy, I'm afraid to tell you that I failed the test. I didn't get the horse back. You tried. That's what's important. So we made it a test, OK? And if you had succeeded, you'd have been mad at me. But I'm your father, uh, was your father. I would never have taken the chance of putting you in real danger without being absolutely sure that you could handle it. So you failed. It's a very good thing. It'll make you not fail next time, maybe. 
my beautiful daughter. I'm proud of you, and I love you. I always loved you. I love you too, Daddy. And I miss you. Why couldn't we have talked like this when you were alive? Insufficient devotion. 